The ruling All Progressive Congress APC is set to go tough on members who have gone ahead with litigation without first exhausting its internal conflict resolution mechanisms. National Secretary of the Party, Senator John Akbanodoidere, had announced the party was compiling a list of members who had ignored the resolution of the National Executive Council, um, asking all members to discontinue court cases instituted against either the party or its leaders. The list, he said, would be forwarded to NEC for the necessary action. Now, in Enugu, the party chapter of the state said that 41 of its members have self-expelled themselves from the party for filing a suit in a court without exhausting the internal mechanisms as provided in the party's constitution. Well, joining us to discuss this is Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a legal practitioner and Adewale Adimola. He is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'll start with you, Tunji, because obviously this is a lot of, there's a lot of litigation involved in this. Uh, I know that you're not a member of the APC, but of course, parties, all political parties have internal mechanisms that need to be explored. But we also know that 2023 is around the corner and we've seen a lot of movements, you know, um, cross capiting here and there. Uh, but for the APC, is expulsion really the way to go right now? Yeah, it may not be the way to go, but I think uh, if you look at the... APC Constitution, particularly Article 21D, which talks about the punishment for, for, for offenses elected in Article 21A. The, one of the punishment for, or the major punishment for a member who decide to take uh, the party to, or party members to, or party to court without uh, exhausting the internal mechanism is uh, expulsion. In other words, automatic uh, Expulsion. That's, that's how to put it. Automatic uh, expulsion. So mm -hmm. I, in in that regard, I it to me, it's, it's, it, it, what they are trying to do is to enforce the provision of the constitution. But to me, it may likely be a, 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 a against fair hearing, because uh, even if you go to court, you should be given a chance to come and explain why you should go contrary to, to 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 to, to the provision of uh, to, to, why should you take the the, the, the party, uh, to to court. And I'm also aware that in that uh, particular section, Article 1, they talk about your fear any. So in other words, if you have done anything contrary to what is contained in the constitution of the, of, of the, of the party, the automatic expression used in that uh, uh, article, I think, is too uh, much. It should be, there should be a room for fear any. You should be able to hear you. And then if, you're not satis if they're not satisfied with your, with your excuse, then you can... Uh... And unfortunately, again, I've looked through the APC constitution, I have not seen specifically the internal mechanism stated in that constitution. Maybe it's a, another document they maybe are using. Maybe it's a gentleman's agreement? Uh, maybe, probably. I've looked through the entire the constitution. I have not been able to see the actual mechanism put in place to resolve uh, To deal with issues, issues like that. Mm -hmm. Now, remember the Booney situation and the, the court case that still allowed for him to be governor and still sit as an executive of the party. I remember um, Professor Kiyamo at, at that same point saying that these issues should be uh, addressed. If not, the party will be open to litigations. And here we are. These litigations are happening and the party is responding by expulsion. 41 people already out in Enugu. And of course, we do not know how many more might have to leave. Let's also not forget that the APC is eyeing the South. He's, the president just you know, left um, Imo State recently. So, of course, the South is this part of the play that the APC is trying to make come 2023. If they're losing these many people, we can actually quickly guess where these people are going to. So, once again, the internal party mechanisms may not necessarily be working in the interest of the party. Yeah, but you can't, you can't uh, ignore, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the laid down rules and regulation on the, on the author of uh, we want to win the election. That's that why we're not growing in this country. Sometimes we allow sentiment to override our uh, position. In other words, we want to ignore the clearly done provision of the law and in the interest of, ah, if you do this, we may not be able to win this, we may not be able to get this, we may not be able to get that, and you don't, we now condone, and thereafter we'll be complaining. I, I think uh, if uh, you are a member of a party and there's a, there are a clear provision of your constitution, you need to follow the constitution. If you fail to follow, you are... You are, you are, you are they, they will be at, at liberty to punish you and, or apply the proper appropriate uh, 
punishment for your acts. But what I'm trying to say is that, look, even a, any provision of the Constitution which take, we takes away your uh, fundamental right of fear, that, 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 that Constitution, to an extent to me, will not be, it's not, it's not, it's not justifiable. Because even in the Constitution, to section, Article 2 of the APC Constitution, they said the, constitution is, the party constitution is supreme, subject to the provision of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And section 36 of the constitution of the of Federal Republic of Nigeria, and uh, uh, section 35, uh, provide for fair earning of uh, an individual. So if you say, I can't go to court if I have a, a grief, uh, yes, you said they must exploit the internal mechanism. If that inter internal mechanism will not give me what I'm looking for, in other words, there's an emergency which I need to get redress, or I need to get something to remedy it, what will happen? So those are the, they have to also consider that. But looking at the fact that, look, people will move. This is, a, this, is a, this, is, this, is, this is the time for people to move from one party to another. Everybody, you know, we have people in politics today in this country who are not there for anybody's interest. They are just using the party as a mechanism to get what they are looking for. And that, that's why we're having people moving from one particular party to the other. Let me, let me go, go to Adewale. Uh, Adewale, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm with you. Great. Uh, let's examine what's going on within the APC now. I mean, we know that the two major political parties are experiencing, you know, some, some sort of shake-up. But <laughs> looking at the trail of, you know, what's been happening in the APC with the Buni issue, uh, and, yep. and, you know, him what him still sitting there and all of the cracks within the party. We saw what the congresses and the, at the local government con congresses came to. Uh, there's still factions who still do not agree uh, with the outcome of that congress. And October, uh, or rather, I think so, um, October 1, we're going to have the state congresses across the country for the APC. Yep. And if the, the issues in the local government have not been addressed, who's to say that the state congresses will go smoothly? Thank you very much. Barista Abdulhamid, I just want to salute you once again, my good friend and barista. Thank you. See, he said something categorical. The party has a constitution, but the constitution is not supreme to the constitution of the country. But now, you know, at a period like this in the history of the nation, this is when you see sheep jumping. Politicians are meant at this period by our primordial sentiment to be jumping parties, moving from one place to the other. And there are conditions precedent to that. Misbehavior, act of disloyalty, an open show of shame or disgrace to one's party automatically expels a party man. So like he has quoted the constitution, a section of the constitution, the article he mentioned, very, very good. But like I said some time ago, in as much as it is not a criminal issue, there might be no contention with any part of the content of the nation's constitution. A party constitution would go ahead to deal with whoever, as long as the person hears. That is one. Number two, the issue of sheep jumping. See, a lot of people deliberately will misbehave now because they want to move or they are calling attention of the party. The president was in the East a while ago, and you know particularly something is going to happen in uh, Anambra. So it's a foreplay to so seeking a way and mean of winning Anambra to APC. So APC party men in Anambra have an opportunity to misbehave, so to say, so as to attract the attention of the party at the central. So as to carry one or two things to me to become relevant. So some of the behaviors now that may be logically, they may, they may be literally misbehaving, are seen to me or by me as deliberate acts of behaviors, trying to inspire that expulsion because people want to jump ship. Thank you very much. Now, I, I just want to take your attention back because I asked about the local government congresses and, of course, the state congresses that are coming up. I, I, aside from the fact that, you know, people are trying to get attention, there are people who genuinely feel that they, who, who are aggrieved as to how certain things have been done within the party and they feel that they deserve fair hearing. I remember when the party also said they were dealing with their issues internally. But if those issues seem to keep continuously raising the, its ugly head, again, I ask, 
what would be the fate of the state congresses come October the second? No, I, I don't I don't expect them to do anything substantially different. They would in all forms and all tendencies support the mode of the party. It is whoever as a party man that falls off that ship that will be thrown up into the ocean. Do you understand? Yes. In as much as the policy is becoming hot and the sentiment is becoming right, the party, through its executive, you saw the, the bunny issue. So while being here as, uh, as an executive and on the other side, at the same time, it should uphold the integrity and the dignity of the party. But if by any act, any party man appears to be anti-party, the party will work against him. Then whoever is still within the party and holding up an eye, the flag of the party, will definitely defend what the party wants done. Uh, let me come back to you, Shunji. Uh, he's made very interesting points as to what the party is going to do going forward. But um, we also saw, I remember this issue started when they started the re-registration of party members. We saw what happened in Kwara State. As we still speak, the three big wigs in Kwara State that are still at loggerheads. We have the Minister for Information, we have the Governor, and we also have the, the sister of the former Speaker, uh, you know, uh, Bemi Sola Saraki. And all of these people are obviously fighting for some form of superiority. And we see the same in different other states. We also see um, um, Akiti State also has some issues uh, within the state. And there are also factions who are saying, well, um, we, we, we side with this person, and this is the person we're going to support. Um, I remember there's a group uh, that, that supports the former governor of Lagos State who also feel that they have been sidelined. And so it, it makes me really wonder and bother about how this issue of zoning, because APC is not really open to zoning as, 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 as the PDP, uh, they, also, they have different ways of dealing with the issue of candidature. How do we see all of this playing out um, come the National Congress in itself? Because we're gradually gearing up to it. By November, we'll, we'll start seeing a lot, of, a lot more uh, drama. Yes, you will see a lot more drama. Because uh, you see, these local government, world congresses and whatever are the basic foundation yes. for you to achieve whatever you want to achieve at the national level. You know that people are eager to, or there are a lot of controversies regarding this uh, local government because that is the area. Anybody who is able to get hold of those uh, what congresses, mm -hmm. local government congresses, or state governments will have a chance of uh, controlling the party in it. So, in other words, this fight is about control of the party. Mm -hmm. So, who wants to control the party? How do you control the party? In my state, for instance, now in Kuala State, you like you said, there are, there are more than three in the APC. They have so many tendencies. They are all all all, all on the same. All, 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 although majority of them are partially together, leaving the governor as a, as a, as a one man standing. So, he, the, as I'm talking to you, the we have, they have two party secretariats in the, as, as uh, APC in Kuala State, mm -hmm. one by Lai Mehmed and Co., then one by the governor. The former, the chairman, Bolaniwa, is currently in court against the national chairman of the APC. He wants him to be removed. That is not properly uh, uh, there. I also have a reservation for that. And it's a gun of, uh, uh, what's it called, kettle of gunpowder for mm -hmm. APC. It may likely affect APC in the, in the future if their care is not taken. Okay. So I, I, I think... Uh, the issue of Congress is, if it's not properly taken care of, it, will rob uh, on what happened at the National uh, Finally, Congress. because we, we are out of time, so you have the last word on this one. The same issue that he's talking about in Akiti is the same that's happening in River State. Let's not forget the Honourable Minister of Transportation and the uh, factional leader of the APC, uh, Senator Magnus Abbey, are also facing the same situation. There, there's a faction of the party that is under Senator Magnus Abbey who feels... Uh, marginalized and then of course the ministers faction who also say that they're the legal um you know drivers of the party so we have seen several parallel primaries or congresses take place in river state these are very important key states for the apc so what does the future hold in closing thank you very much like i said earlier the course of the season now the quality is heating up and so many things are coming up. So like you have just highlighted, the boonie and so many other issues are expected because people seek relevance. 
And you know, internal cracks on the walls of the party have been existing before now. But you know, because we are too close to the toll gate of the next election, attention must drift towards that. And like I said, at all times and for all purposes, the party, in order to withhold influence and control, will flush whoever does not uphold the integrity of the party out. Mm. Well, at the expense of losing more of its members? Well, I, I think that question is for the APC to uh, answer. Tunji Dulamid is a legal practitioner and Adewale Ademola uh, is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank All you right. very much. We will take a short break to hear what Nigerians have to say about their safety in this country. And when we return, I'll say my goodbyes. I believe uh, being safe in this nation now depends on you yourself. Because if you are talking about the government, the government is trying their own ability. But personally, we need to intensify more effort on our own personal security. In terms of you being in your house, make sure your, your house is safe. In terms of lock the locks. And apart from that, we are all uh, security men to ourselves. What I mean by that is each person should be a neighborhood watch to himself and to his community. Ah, the way we are feeling this Nigeria today is we are in God and may God help us so we cannot say about the same, the way Nigeria is going now. No safe for Nigeria. Nigeria thinks everything are very hard. Even those soldiers are suffering in uh, Medukuri for how long? Some women, their husbands are dying there without to be a widow. It's not a good thing now. We are not feeling safe. Even though this Lagos we are high, every time kidnap and kidnap so much, so much, so much children. I don't see that we are saving this country. When I go out and I see the mass movement of people across board from the northeast to the northwest to the southwest to the southeast, if you see the mass movement of people on the road, I wonder if it's true that we are facing insecurity in this country. So I cannot really, I can put it in between. Fine, critically, some places are in terrible security situation, while some places are very, very safe. So like Lagos, for instance, Lagos is very, very safe. There is no issue of insecurity abounding here in Lagos, unlike what you hear in the news every day. But the more we hear it, do we have, we have counter uh, proposal coming back against, against whatever you are talking about, insecurity in the nation. So to me, I stand in between. I can't really say whether the country is safe or the country is not. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of the show tonight. Let's keep keeping positive news on our radar, of course, the negative news will always be there, but let's also try to project the positivity in Nigeria. I am Mary Anna Kona. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.